<laughs> I'm so hungry. I'm always afraid of making pita. I feel like I, I will forever live in the shadow of my, <laughs> my ancestors. There is nothing more I want than peace and quiet with a pita. Hi y'all, welcome to Flambe, my dumpster fire of a cooking show. My name is Yanni. Today we're gonna be making a butternut squash tiropita. Imagine that. So Americans or English speakers hear pita or pita and they think pita bread, that flat stuff with a pocket inside, very native to Mediterranean food. That is not what we're making today, that is a whole separate thing. We are making a Greek pita. It means pastry. So you can have sweet pitas, you can have savory pitas. Today we are making one with roasted butternut squash, a little crumbled feta, and filo pastry dough, and then we are baking it to perfection. Okay, so ingredient number one is going down and absolutely roasting that like button, baking it, broil it, searing it, frying it, flambéing that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It tells me, yes, I love your content. Please keep making some more. All right, let's get started. And welcoming my friend the butternut squash to the stage. <laughs> Take this bad boy, slice it lengthwise, salt, pepper, olive oil, lay it on a baking sheet and bake it. What's gonna happen is this is gonna get roasty and toasty, it's gonna get soft, and this is gonna be used as the base of our filling. Now you wanna be careful with your um, digits when slicing butternut squash because these things are pretty dense, so don't hurt yourself when you're doing this. If you are a child, always have a parent present. Okay. There we go. Okay, you know this little seed area of your butternut squash? Feel free to... My brain just died. This little bit, this little, this little hole in the butternut squash, empty it, grab a spoon, core it out, take all those seeds out, save them, dry them out, and then toast them and throw them in salads, snack on them, they are perfectly good and delicious. So go ahead, grab your spoon, and scoop, scoop, scoop away to your heart's desires. You can do this after you cook them too, but once it starts getting mushy, like you can keep going and scooping and scooping until there's no butternut squash left. Olive oil, a little bit of salt, and you're gonna top it off with some black pep. Pop your butternut squash in the oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to roast this until it gets soft. I cannot give you a time frame. I don't know how long that takes. I just look at it and poke it until it's ready. I suggest you start cooking that way too. That way you get a feel. You get a feel of your food and how it develops. Poke it with a fork. If it's smooth, if it's almost creamy, you know it's ready to take out. But if it's kind of difficult for the fork to pierce through, then you know I have to leave it in for a little longer. So who knows? 45 minutes maybe? We'll see. I'll check in with you soon. Next step, let's take an onion and dice it up. Dice it kind of finely, because remember, this is part of the filling. We don't want like big onion chunks when we're biting into our beautiful tiropita. Pop it in the pan, olive oil, salt, pepper. We're going to cook it down until it's translucent, until we bring some of those sweeter oniony flavors out. Season these a little bit too, just cause we can. You wanna season every ingredient. All right, these are looking pretty good. They're looking about as translucent as my ex-boyfriend wearing his SPF 100 on the beach. That's when you know, take them off the pan. Now we are chopping some sage. <laughs> I feel like sage looks like a tongue. I mean, look at this. This literally looks like a tongue. Look at all those bumps on here. This is so silly. Sage is so dumb. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop these like five sage leaves really finely. This is gonna go into our stuffing. Same deal over here with our mint. Just go through and finely chop it. Okay, let's see. I've got my fork. Let us poke this thing. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, that's ready. That, that's done. <laughs> that is very soft to the touch. A pita which has feta is only gonna be as good as its feta. So here I have a beautiful mezzovo feta in a brine. If you have the option, go to a Greek specialty store, get feta that's stored in a brine. It's gonna be really, really fresh. It's gonna be perfectly salty. That's a great option. If you can't or don't have access to a Greek specialty store, Go to your grocery store. Chances are they probably have feta, maybe even in smaller containers that's stored in a brine. What we're gonna need here is a 
third of a pound of feta. I'm just gonna break up the feta pieces a little bit. That way when the butternut squash goes in, it can distribute and disperse throughout the mix more evenly. In this, I'm going to add my fresh sage and my fresh mint. I think our onions have cooled down just enough, so let's pop those in here too. All right, we've got our butter and squash here. Once it's just cool enough to handle, flip it over and just start peeling off the skin. Next, you wanna take those butternut squash pieces and pop it in that bowl with the feta. All right, now here I have got a spice blend, quarter teaspoon each of onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika, black pepper, and cumin. I want to really contribute to the savory qualities of this dish. Next, we're popping in two eggs here. Let us bind this thing. Yeah, I guess in theory, you're supposed to crack eggs into a separate bowl, but sometimes you just don't have enough bowls. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you ever have those days, like the days where you just don't have enough bowls, you're like, man, I wish I had more bowls. Mix this in. Lastly, just a little drizzle of olive oil. So this is zest of uh, just about half an orange. The orange is not the star of the show. It's just the, it's the stage hand, you know? It's the, it's the assistant director. You know, but it's not, it's not the star. We have made our filling. Now it is time to construct our piece of art. All right, go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. On my left here, I have an unrolled box of phyllo pastry. Which way is this? <laughs> phyllo pastry is an unleavened pastry dough. It's very thin, it's very flaky, and when you bake it, it turns crispy, crispy, crispy. There's a lot of different sizes of phyllo pastry dough. The higher the number goes, the finer the filo dough is. I'm using a lower number, so that means it's a little thicker. It's just for this specific thing, my mom said, hey, this is the number you use. And I said, okay, you're right. Shout out to mom out there. Shout out to my mom. She is number one. Thank you for teaching me how to make pitas. Thank you for literally handing me this recipe to create on my little channel. You're the best. One more, ground rule. Okay, filo. Very finicky, very brittle stuff. It breaks in a heartbeat. A way to preserve this while you're working with the filo is to lay down a damp towel over it. Make sure to wring it out really well. If it's too damp, if it's too wet, it's gonna make the layers stick to one another and kind of turn pasty. This is gonna be very difficult to work with. So, damp, but not too damp. Got it? Cool. All right, you buttheads. I forgot to mic myself. So we're gonna do a little voiceover, old baby voiceover action. So, Maybe I'll do this like David Attenborough. Drizzle the olive oil along the bottom of the pan and brush it up the sides. You know, I don't think that that's the vibe today. Drizzle olive oil along the bottom of the baking dish, grab a pastry brush, and brush it all around up the sides. You want to get everything oily. Now your first piece of filo, you're going to lay it lengthwise perpendicularly to the dish. You want lots of overhang and you're only going to cover about 70% of the dish. Next piece, you're going to lay and cover the second half, the uncovered bit of the dish. Same deal. You want to press the corners just because you don't want them to rip later. So make sure the edges are all kind of snug and tight. And from here on out, you want to layer olive oil filo pastry, olive oil filo pastry, making sure not to use the pastry brush. So this olive oil will be drizzled. You want air between these layers. You don't want them too compact and pressed. You see this overlap, this overhang? This is very important because at the end we're going to go through and we're going to roll it up towards the center. So we did our base, we did half of our filling in here. So we're just gonna do one layer of filo between filling half one and filling half two. And that was it, look at that. We are gonna do just a little more olive oil between the layers. And again, so we're gonna do the exact same thing we did on the bottom on the top, five to six layers on top, and then we'll go in and finish it up. As you notice, there are lots of, there are lots of little wrinkles here. This does not have to be perfect. It's actually welcome if it's not. The more air, you know, in those little wrinkly bits, the better, because when it cooks, it's gonna come out really, really crispy. And I'm just gonna lay one last one, kind of in the middle like this. Oop, beautiful, look at her. These corners, these edges, we are going to roll them in. We're gonna get some breakage and that is okay. We'll do the same thing on this side. Now, this side here. And our last little bit over here. I am going to, should I put, I'm just gonna do a little, just one last. 
we're gonna go through, we're gonna score this exactly where we'll cut the pieces when it's done baking. Because otherwise this will blow up, have a huge dome on top, sprinkle a little bit of sesame seed. Okay, I'm gonna add a little more oil, honestly, it needs a little more. My mom does this thing, she wets her hand in the sink and just flicks water on it. This is gonna hydrate the dough just a little bit. We're gonna pop this in for 55 to 60 minutes. Keep an eye on it. You'll know when it's done, when it's like golden brown and crispy on the top, when the whole smell is spreading throughout the house. Mm -hmm. Smell is just as important as sight when you are baking. Mm. See you in an hour. This looks absolutely beautiful. All right, let's give this a taste. So this is the edge, this is the corner piece. Look at all those layers of filo. That filo pastry is so flaky. It's so delicate and it just crisps up. It tastes like it was covered in butter, but it wasn't. <laughs> it has been crisped to perfection. That was beautiful. Now the filling, butternut squash. Already, it's a thing that's very good. It's sweet, it is nutty. It can go in either a sweet or a savory direction. Spices that we added completely root it in savory. The cumin, the paprika, and the other vegetable powders make it this smoky, sexy, crispy little snack. I have to say, my mother definitely kicks my butt. I'm, there's no way this is even close to hers. So the huge problem that we encounter when making a pizza like this is that you can eat half the tray by yourself. <laughs> I have a feeling that Trey and I are gonna be getting very intimate this evening. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> and I shall not forget about the sage and the mint. It adds a very refreshing little pew. Like little fireworks, baby fireworks in your mouth. Oh my lord, that was so good. If you have not already, please go down, roast that like button, hit subscribe, tap on that little notification bell. Help me get to my goal. As always, my name is Yanni and thank you for watching Flambe. Yo, that was absolutely fl flan, flam, flambetastic, flant. That's not, I can't make that a thing. <laughs> okay, but. <laughs>